I'm going to tell you guys the uh, crimp. This is a fly pattern I came up with. It's kind of halfway between a shrimp and a crab, and it'll catch kind of any species that eat shrimp and crabs, like bonefish, redfish, permit. Um, you know, the list goes on. And it's got uh, attributes of, of both. And it's uh, kind of when I like to fish this fly is when you're fishing for bonefish, and there's an outside chance that you'll see a permit. This fly is crabby enough to where it, it stands to reason as much as you re can reason with permit that they, you know, you might have a better shot with that than, uh, than say, just a, a standard bonefish fly. And, and it works really good for bonefish, too. Um, and I tie this in sizes, you know, on the big size, size 2 down to about a 6 in, uh, you know, a variety of different colors. But you know, we'll tie a tan one here for you just because tan's a... A real good all-around color no matter where you're fishing. Um, just pop a, a standard saltwater hook in the vise as a size 2 and uh, attach my thread um, up towards the eye of the hook. You have a choice with uh, the kind of eyes you want to put on. We're going to tie in some little bead chain eyes. This, this is you know maybe designed for a little bit shallower water, a little bit lighter entry. Also tie these guys with lead eyes too for, for deeper water and especially if you're going to tie some for, for permit where you'll most likely be fishing in some deeper water. But uh, just attach these, uh, these eyes pretty close to the eye of the hook. You want to leave a little bit of space um, right there. We're going we're gonna to tie in um, a couple of materials up there. So you want to leave a little bit of space and just do a couple figure eights little bit of zappa gap and just secure those eyes with a bunch of wraps so they're not spinning on you just like that now move your thread all the way back to the barb of the hook right about there and the first thing we're going to tie in is just some tan craft for um, just cut off a you don't need a ton of it um, but cut off a bunch and then just kind of stack it to even out the tips stack it a couple of times Just like that, and you know, for a size two like this, we're gonna oh, maybe have that oh, about an inch and a half long. And then just tie that in, just a nice little tail. Just like that. Um, let's see, the next thing we're gonna tie in is just a little bit of flash, just a little bit of pearl flash. Just like so. Trim that even with the end of the craft fur. And then uh, we're going to take some span flex, and this is white, is probably the color I use the most. Um, and then you can color them up with a, a Sharpie marker. I usually put a brighter colored um, tip on there, and then maybe some br or brown or tan barrings on there. Um, but you do red tips and chartreuse tips, kind of whatever you want. It's kind of fun to uh, play with some different color combinations. And so I'm going to take two of those guys um, and tie those in almost like antenna. Just kind of bury those into that craft fur. Just like that, and they kind of look like little little feelers or little legs or antenna. You just cover that up. Now, what I'm going to do is I've already pre-made some little shrimp eyes. These are pretty darn easy to make and they're really cool. They really add a lot of uh, realism. And basically what you do is you just take some 12 or 16 pound monofilament 
and slip a little colored glass bead on, like a little midge-sized glass bead. Then you take a lighter and singe the end of the epoc or of the uh, the monofilament, just uh, just so the bead doesn't slide off. And then you mix up some epoxy, and then you just take the the glass bead and monofilament, and just dip it in the epoxy, and it kind of ends up looking like this when it dries. Certainly helps to have a uh, epoxy turner for that. In fact, it's pretty much a necessity unless you want to sit there and do these by hand. Um, but so long as you didn't put a whole bunch of epoxy on there, they really don't drip all that much. So you could do some without a uh, without an epoxy turner, but you end up with some really cool little hard shrimp eyes. And I'm going to tie those in now. And what I'm going to do is have those extending back past the barb, um, you know, maybe about a quarter of an inch into the, uh, into the tail there. And I'm going to tie those in on the sides of the hook shank. Just like that. See how that ended up kind of on the side there. I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. I just kind of line them up so they're even. And do the same thing to the other side. And wrap them. I usually just wrap them all the way down to the eyes and back. So you have a nice flat uniform surface to tie the rest of the, uh, the fly on. And then just, you know, if there's any excess, you can just trim off, trim off that. Then what I usually do is just kind of bend these guys out a little bit just so they stick out like that. And then this is a real good place to use some head cement or zap a gap just to kind of really make that permanent. Just like that, we got, you know, we're maybe about halfway done and certainly done the front part of this fly. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is take some sparkle yarn, which is, you know, what you use to tie like a merkin crab. Pretty common, pretty easy, easy to find material. And as far as colors go, you guys can mix this up if you want to. A lot of times I'll do like a merkin body where you do tan brown, tan brown, tan brown, or whatever color you want to. Um, sky's the limit as far as colors with uh, flies go. But what I'm going to do is just trim, uh, trim that sparkle yarn into maybe about a half inch piece. And just like you would tie uh, a merkin crab, just do a couple of figure eights. Just like that. And we're just going to continue that all the way down the shank of the hook. Um, and we're going to add in some more of these Spanflex legs kind of on the belly of the fly. Maybe take six at a time. Flip this guy like that and just tie them on the belly. I usually do two sets of them. One kind of right here. And then we'll add some more sparkle yarn pieces and kind of move down the shank of the hook. And this kind of forms almost kind of the more of the, the crab-like shape of this fly. Um, gives it a little bit of an oblong look. And you know, I, I think if you, at first glance you really look at this fly, it's really a, a shrimp imitation, but it's just crabby enough to where you might be able to fool one of those permit with these things. And maybe add one more set of legs back here. Grab six or so of these rubber legs. Tie them in just like the others. And then lastly, I've been doing a little orange, hot orange piece. Just for the very last one, it kind of looks like a, you know, a spawning shrimp or just a little bit of extra color in there. I kind of like it. Secure that guy with a couple of figure eights. Now, 
what I'm going to do is trim this yarn into uh, kind of a long oval shape. Um, and I usually just kind of use my thumb and forefinger just as a guide. And just give that sparkle yarn a bit of a haircut. Try not to cut any of the legs. And do the same thing to the other side. About like that. That's the kind of shape that I like. Um, you know, fairly streamlined, not a perfectly round shape, just a nice kind of oblong shape, just like that. And kind of the last step in this is to take another, uh, another bunch of, of craft fur and tie in kind of a overwing over the top. Maybe use a little bit more crafter than you did for the very front up here, just for a little bit more coverage. And just stack that a few times. And uh, when you kind of line this up as far as, as far as the measurement goes, maybe just kind of meeting up with uh, the end of the craft fur on the front. And I like to trim mine before I tie it in. Trim it to length like that. And then tie it in and that way you don't have to clog up the eye of the hook. You can just tie it in nice and clean just like that. You can also add a weed guard to this. It can be make the difference between uh, getting a fish and not getting a fish. You know, usually put a 12 or 16 pound hard monofilament weed guard on there um, just to keep from uh, from getting hung up. But this is a great little fly to throw. Um, you know, to anything that would eat a shrimp. I've, I've fished this guy a lot to bonefish, and and they scarf this thing. Um, Give it a whip finish. And you've got the crimp. Half crab, half shrimp. Go throw this thing to a bonefish and see what happens. <laughs>